Uh, so yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, <clears throat> for those who don't know who we are, um, I'm Wolfgang, that's Michael. And we are based in Australia on the Gold Coast. So for us, it's uh, evening. And today we're doing something really interesting, and that's a snore guide. And so it's upper lower, and we'll uh, combine those with a couple of attachments and things like that. So um, <clears throat> I'll be keeping my eye on the chat feature. If you've got a question, uh, just type away. I'll do my best to relay the message over to Mike. Um, alternatively, I'm sure he'll take a couple of breaks. You can ask away there or even afterwards. So yeah, welcome to the session and uh, let's get started. Um, in, this, in this tutorial, we'll be using, well, the model designer, we'll use the block art module and we'll use the splint uh, designer for, for making and, this. And articulator. And the articulator. And articul yeah, that, that yeah. gets all articulated. So um, <clears throat> there's quite a bit that we're going to go through. So um, Mike will cruise through it and I'll do a, cup, cup, a bit of talking as to what procedures he's just doing. Excellent. So I'll toggle you over onto Mike. Yeah. Before we start, I'd just like to put a footnote down there. And um, there are many different designs. So, you know, this design, this is a live patient case, and that's for Wolfgang, because <laughs> you snore. <laughs> but <laughs> wife doesn't like it. All right. It's, but, this is, so it's a bit <laughs> anecdotal, but... You guys can design, you know, the guys, whichever you like, you know, there's no limit to it. I, I'm thinking of comfort point of view. And so we'll be covering a lot of the comfort point of view here. Yeah. So it's, it's a different type of design. So, you know, if, if you've got criticism about it, that's okay. <clears throat> you know, um, ultimately you guys are in charge of your own, own stuff as well. So, okay. Should we, should we get started? Well, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to switch over to my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Um, not where's yet. My, where's my blender? Can you see my screen? Yes, all good. Excellent, perfect. I'll just shift this up a bit like that. All right, so um, we start with models and these these have been made with a model designer. Um, I'm sure you guys already know how to do this if you've got the module. They've been put into the center of the workspace, but sometimes the center is not exactly where we should have them. So what I'm gonna do is in the articulator module, I'm gonna just name these. So this one is the upper and this one is the lower. And we're going to import a mounting table. And now this mounting table, it'll hide the lower, okay? So this is quite important because we want to sort of get it to where we, we want to, to get it. And now th this is actually like a, like a plate. So I'm not going to go too much in detail, but just to explain, so we want this to be sort of the midline, well, the midline, I'm looking at this portion here, because sometimes the teeth aren't exactly in the midline. And then I'm going to look at it from the right side. Okay, that's all good. And I'm going to delete the mounting table. So I'm quite happy with this arrangement. Then what we're going to do is we're going to import the articulator. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to import that. And that's already been set. The articulator has already been set because if I go at the bottom of the screen and I go view, it'll, it, it's, it's already been animated. But because we want to shift the jaw, the lower jaw in a forward movement, I'm going to leave it as it is, but I'm going to click on the edit sign of the protrusive. Okay, so here's a protrusive. And this is quite good. And I've, I've been looking at this and it's quite exact because Wolfgang has like wear facets there on the front tooth. And the articulator already has been set in such a way that we've got that almost spot on. You can actually see how this dimple goes like this. And that's quite, that's quite a thing that I've noticed earlier today. I thought, wow, that's quite amazing. But now what we want to do is we want to open this bite a little bit. So I've moved it. Ideally, we would 
we would put it into the phonetic position, but um, here we're using the articulator, but you can do that in the surgery by taking a bite, of course. So you don't really have to do this if you don't, if you don't have a bite, if you don't have the occlusion. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this a little bit. So in the forward movement, I'm gonna open it say to three degrees or something. Now, actually that's, that's quite a bit. That's open, a bit much. So. Yeah. <clears throat> So we've got, to, much... we've got to think about the comfort of this device for well, the patient. So it's 1. just... 1.5, that's about three millimeters open on articulator. So I'm, I'm actually having a look at the posterior teeth so that we can actually put it, because it's a double splint, which is cut in, in half. So I'm going to leave it like that. And then we're going to set the new location. So if you've got the uh, articulator, just click on update module because there have been a few changes recently. So now we don't need the articulator anymore. I'm going to delete everything, delete the condyles. Okay, so we've got a new byte, which is input drusive, and we can continue. Now, the next step, what we would do in the lab, we would block it out. So we're going to go to the block out, and I'm going to say, okay, this is the upper and this is the lower. So last week we, we, we saw somebody try to simultaneously block out. So they do the offset for this one and the offset, please don't do that. Just carry on one at a time. So we're gonna do the upper one first. So, so here, create offset. And in Wolfgang's case with the other printer, we set the offset to 0 0.15. So, if your splints are too loose, this is where you set it. We're gonna apply that and we're going to then finish this, this offset model. So this is an offset model. Next is we're gonna survey this model and I'm gonna look at it from the top and I'm gonna tilt this a little bit. It's exactly like the survey table in the dental laboratory. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create all these model. So this takes a little bit of time to calculate. Uh, recently, I've adjusted it to get even more precise, and this is why it takes a little bit longer. So in the, in the meantime, I'll just grab up a, a, a quick photo while we're waiting. Um, and Wolf, you can just explain what's going on in this photo. Hold on, um, desktop. Zoom here, so example here. So this is, this is. Yeah, okay, you, yeah, you can just see it. So what I've done is Michael's designed these um, attachments and the blue, um, it's like a elastomeric um, power chain, they call it for orthodontics, um, uh, regularly used and orthodontics will Orthodontists might um, recognize this. Uh, you've lost the picture, Michael. Oh yeah, there you go. So these are little loops and the benefit of this, th this elastic is very, very strong <clears throat> because it's got these little ring loops. Um, it gives us the ability to adjust the lower jaw uh, protrusively forward according to these loops. So if you find that you want to bring the jaw a little bit further forward, you're just going to hook it into one of the other attachments. And the other, the other good thing about this, with what I find is because it's slightly elastic, if you're changing your sleep position, your, your lower jaw has the ability to um, uh, move a little bit. So <clears throat> this device isn't completely locked in. You get many different attachments. Um, so I found that to have the lower jaw a bit of, there's a bit of freedom to move left and right in case you're changing your position at night. Um, we've got a question there. No, okay. So here we've got the block up module. So the Bluetooth zeichen is weg. Okay, I've muted. Michael, carry on. All right, so we've done the first one, and this is an engaging model. I'm going to go to the, the next one. And this one is a little bit more tricky because, because of that gap. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do, we want it retentive, but we want it passive inside of this gap, right? So I'm going to create the, the offset, which is, uh, again, I'm going to put 0 0.15 there and, and apply that. Okay, and then we're going to create this model. And this time around, we're going to survey the lower model. So we're going to hide the other menus, survey lower, and we're going to Get, get a good survey. Here I'm looking at this side particularly, and I'm looking at this gap here as well. So, and I'm looking at these front teeth. So for those of you that are experienced in surveying, making chrome car welds or whatever, this, this should be actually quite logical and easy to do. So from here, we can mark the undercuts. We don't have to mark them if we don't want to. Um, and then what we can, well, I'll just mark them just to demonstrate what it looks like. So, you know, here we can see that undercuts are marked and then we're going to create a passive model. Again, this takes a, a, a minute or so just to calculate there. So Wolfgang, can you tell me um, how, did, how did they, they fit when, when we print it? What, uh, the, the printer that we use? Yeah, can so I'm explain? using a, a Pionex printer and I um, use the transparent surgical guide um, resin. And um, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the print took about maybe an hour, maybe hour 15 minutes to print. I like to print them horizontally flat on the build plate. And um, yeah, no, no issues with the fitting. And you can see there with the gap, there's a bit of undercuts, but they were all successfully blocked out. And the bites, this is a passive model, Wolfgang. Yeah. So we, we would like to get a bit of retention in there though. You know, so we're going to adjust the, the dynamic undercuts. And here you can see they are blocked out. We can set a, a less or more undercut block out by this minus 0 0.2. We'll leave it at that and we're going to apply the offset. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the sculpting mode. Now the sculpting mode is quite important because here we want to make sure it's, it's, it's actually blocked out that we don't have to sit there with a hand piece and you, you know muck around. So what I'm doing is I'm adding, I'm adding to this layer. So here I'll take this up a little bit more and I'm bulking it out a little bit just to make sure that this indeed is blocked out nicely, okay? And of course you can take away as well, which is the beauty about this um, block out. So here, for example, <coughs> we've got a bit of undercut. We can see where we got the undercuts and you can also go minus if you want to clean up a few few spots here and there. So when you're done with that, we're going to exit this and then we're going to create our retentive model. Okay, so create retentive model. That will remesh it and we're going to finish it. Now this is the one we're going to be using. So we've got both blocked out models ready to go. Okay, next we're going to go into the splint module. And here, the first thing is we're going to name the target model we're going to be working on. Then shift right click to place our cursor and we're going to start drawing the outline of where we want this to go. So Wolf, maybe you can explain to me in your situation what was a good... Yeah, so um, I found way. that uh, uh, personally, I, I thought having a air open space in front is quite important. So initially I had a, um, a lower layer that covered the incisal edges, but uh, I found that I'd rather wanted to, to open that up the airway. So, and also going towards the um, palate uh, lingual side later on, we kept a more minimalistic um, design in mind. So here we're going over onto the mucosa. Remember this model is slightly offset, so it wasn't impinging on the gum. And on the inner side, we kept it really close to the teeth, to the cervical edges. And I thought that was quite important because there's nothing worse than wearing something like this and you have a gag reflex. So we want to eliminate that as much as possible. <clears throat> So, Wolf, do you think what the way I'm doing this is what we you, what we did before? It's yes, more or less, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Going around the back molars like that. 
Uh, all right, and then what we then what we do is we trim that, and then we select the surface we want to keep and click on clean, and then we're going to make a layer. Now, in this case, we we made the layer thinner <coughs> than we, we yeah. Than it was we one point five, I think, one point five millimeters thick. So That's we right. double that to make it three millimeters and then we accept that and yeah. then we can smooth this layer. So I'll just give a quick smoothing here like this. It doesn't have to be too smooth because we're gonna smooth it a few times. Think of this like a mini flame in the, in the lab and wax. And all we, we're doing is we're smoothing it, but we're gonna get down to doing that later on anyway. Yeah, so, so Michael, when we click on, yeah. Um, with yeah. these with these appliances, they can sometimes sit very tight in the mouth, and I felt that um, if you if you're trying to pull this out of the mouth, you've got to really get your nail or your fingers under lodged under the plate to 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 lift it out. So we decided we're going to use a tube on the um, close to the molar area, uh, premolars, Michael, on the side of the premolars. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, no, also we put a tube there as well, isn't it? Yeah, like a little roll. That's correct. And that is mainly to strengthen uh, the plate because you can appreciate 1.5 millimeters is quite thin. So we thought, okay, let's thicken it up slightly here. Yeah, so we went sort of all the way. That's correct. Some, something like that. And then we, we thin that out, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Like, like that. And here we went as well a little bit further. Maybe to the molar area, to the mesial like side. Like that. Yeah, something and like that, con yeah. Control <laughs> A makes it thinner. And then, of course, to make this one object, actually, um, we, we're going to remesh this one because that's a procedure we use, and we're going to apply that. Okay. Now, it is transparent, but that will change. Then we, we added one over here. So select <coughs> the model, shift, shift yeah. right-click to place the cursor. Yeah. So take it, take it from, no, no, go further back, Michael. Um, the mesial side of the molar, can you stretch it all the way? And that is so you can get your finger under there to lift it out. That's right. Like that. And yeah. then what we did is we took it up to here, is it? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Something like that. And that creates a complete opening of the airway, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. So how far did we take it up to the molar here or something? Yeah, yeah, I think so. But we made it a little bit thicker, isn't it? A, yeah, slightly thicker. A. And it's actually hardly noticeable. I mean, your lip rests against it, but you don't really feel it. Um, so it's, it's, it's got a minimalistic feel to, to the whole thing. Now we're going to join them all up and make a one object. So the way we do that is we shift left click and then shift left click, take the, the splint layer last, and then we have to join that. So if you can't if you can't remember the key to use, it's Control J on the keyboard, or then you or you find yourself one of these buttons that says Join Object. They're all over the modules. Just click Join Teeth or Join whatever. So that that will that will join it in one. And then we're going to remesh the entire lot. Which at the moment there, there are three objects which are joined, but we want a one mesh solid watertight object. And we're going to go voxel remesh, and then we're going to set that say it's too dense. We don't need it that dense. Maybe zero point three, and we're going to apply that. Now this is one object, and of course we're going to then um, smooth it a little bit later. But let let us move on to the upper now. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. That becomes a target model. And then shift, shift right click to place a cursor and then draw the line. Now, when you're doing the second one, the second line, this one may appear because they're both the same, a similar name object. So just hide that, go back in there, tab, and then just continue what you were doing. So um, I think we went a bit higher over the canine, Michael. Just, yeah. No, no, no. Did, did we take? No, it was over the oh. gingiva slightly. On, yeah. So we want to like, engage. Like, no, no, other like way. Like that. Um, no, 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 which which way? 
Yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, you're right. Cervically, go over the the cervical, no, over the gingiva and then tuck it where the laterals are. I think we encapsulated the canines. Did we encapsulate the canines? Um, okay, yeah. let me just have a look at the other one. Yes, we do, because our splint material, our dual arch material has to go on both of them because we're joining them up. Especially, That's 100% correct. And we used an occlusal uh, rim, so we want to maximize on that. Something like so that. So did we, we did something <clears throat> like that, isn't it? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's it. And, and then we, did we go this way? Is yeah, it? yeah, that's it. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to copy the same <coughs> thing on this side. Um, I think, did we completely encapsulate the I camera? think, I yeah, totally encapsulated. And the lower like, cervical edge ran over the gum slightly, yeah. That's it. That's it. Like, like, like yeah. that. And then yeah. we went all the way across, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Now I th I think we notice a bit of a defect in this in the scan at the in the back. That's why we've we kept it a little bit shorter, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. All right. So that's that's looking quite good. All right. I think the so, other canine just pull it um a little bit lower. K913, if you check it in a minute. Oh, Sorry, yeah, it's... okay, Sorry. I can see. Yeah, yeah. just put it. This one here. Yeah, encapsulate here. it, yeah. That's it, that's it. Okay, all good. Like that? Yeah, yeah. And here here as well? Yeah. Is that is that how we did it? Like I think, something like yeah. that? That's a good design, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to trim that. Select the surface you want to keep. If ever it doesn't cut, go go back. You, you should see two colors. If you only see one color, go control Z back and shift your line a little bit different where you can see there is no cut. Because when you when I look close, you can see there's a gap running between the two. So if there's one color, it didn't cut. But mostly we don't have this problem. Just keep out of these deep crevices and you know rough areas or something. Okay, always think about simplicity when you're designing anything. All right, so we're going to click on clean and then we're going to make the layer and set this again to three, which is 1.5 mils in thickness once you cut the inner surface down. Okay, so let's just do this and we're going to finish this layer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing with the tubing design, isn't it? Yes. I think we, we started somewhere over there, isn't it? So yeah. when, when you're using the tubing, make sure that you're using this dropper to bring that above the surface. Otherwise, you may not even see this, this tubing here. So here, I'm not sure how we did it. Uh, no, no, scallop it. it lower towards the uh, cervical edges, um, the gum line kind of. Like something like that. And But we did go into the retentive area where you can see the line where the, the blockout is. Yeah. Yeah, the you, undercut. So we made sure that it actually go. It went into the undercut, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. And then we took this like this somehow. Is it? Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> and then here we're going to do the same thing so, yeah. somehow, like 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 that. And then A, Control A on the keyboard to make it a bit thicker, something like that. Now, if you don't know how thick this is, it's quite easy to see how. The, how thick the diameter is, you go to the item and up here, you will see it's 1.5. It says the radius is 1.5. So you can estimate the diameter would be three millimeters minus whatever surface you're cutting away on the inside, because here you're cutting a bit, bits and pieces away. So, you know, you, you, this is how we estimate how <coughs> thick this is. All right, so I think that's about thick enough. Is or shall we change it? No, leave I it like that. All right, so we're going to voxel remesh this and we're going to apply that. That becomes an object now, okay? Um, if you do want to change things, you can go into edit mode, get the magnet tool off, the proportional editing is on, and you can go and you can grab this mesh if you want to. So you can grab it, so you're not, you're not totally stuck where you don't, 
you know, you, you can still manipulate this mesh if you want to. Just make sure the magnet tool, the snap magnet tool is on and the proportional editing is, is on and the magnet tool is off. All right, so let's fuse them together. This one and this one. Yeah. Again, control J or find yourself a join objects thing. So, okay, join objects. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have to remesh them. So voxel remesh. And we're going to then, this is too fine. We don't need to work. You know, naturally we think uh, we want to have precise precision and stuff. But the only thing that really needs precision is the inside fitting surface. What's on the outside could be a, a cube or a block or something with four, like, you know, eight vertices or something, you know? So, you know, we have to think about the usability of Blender, you know, the speed of Blender. If you've got something really dense, it can slow it down, especially if you've got a lot of things on the scene. So, and, it makes Boolean cuts and unions more complicated. And if they fail, you know, the simpler, the better. Okay, so I'll leave this at say 0 0.3 and then we're going to apply. All right, so, and then of course, I want to smooth it down a little bit. So find yourself a, a smooth, smooth layer and we're just going to brush it over. So here with the smooth layer, um, there's something called Dinotopa up top right hand, and the higher this is, the smoother it becomes. Now, at the moment, it's quite quite rough. So if I set this, say, to 8, okay, then when I smooth it, it becomes nice and smooth, but the mesh becomes more dense. But that's also something to, to take note, okay? The Dinotopa, it's called. And that check mark should always be be checked. So here, for example, if I put the Dinotopo on maybe four, okay, so watch the difference. Okay, what, okay, here you can't see much difference. Let's set that to say two, okay, and <coughs> so when I brush it, you can see the, how, how much rougher and how much, it's like sandpaper. It's like coarse and fine sandpaper. That's the best explanation, I think, that I can think of. Okay, so, but we can smooth that down later as well. So we don't have to spend that much time on that. So exit, it will, it will voxel remesh at the same time because we always want to have a good mesh structure and then apply. Excellent. Are there any questions so far with this? Wolf, I think what we could have do, done is we could have opened the occlusion a bit more. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> because here already they, 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 they are touching each other. Can you see? Yeah. Um, I, I think so, so having the front open provides a airway. But also the other thing is um, initially I made a couple of designs with a, a, um, a layer that stretches over the incisor. Um, a tip so completely enclosed anteriorly and when this jaw is um, when the lower jaw is pulled forward it causes tremendous stress on the incisal tips of the teeth because it's kind of it's kind of a pivot point um, if you've got uh, attachments on on the, the upper and the lower with an elastic or whatever um, bar that's holding the jaw forward and there's a slight um, opening in your sleep. For example, it, it's, it's not fully engaged in the undercuts or something like that. It will cause tremendous stress on the incisal tips. So if with an open design like that, you, you prevent that from happening, which is quite a, for me personally, it's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm a bit um, concerned that we didn't open the bite more because, you know, when we're trimming in between, it's going to be quite tricky. But um, yeah, so I think we opened yours a little bit more initially. But okay, let, let's, let's keep going. So to do a dual splint, we have to name the upper, say, opposing layer. That's the opposing layer. And that becomes a layer. So that's very important to do so that the, the coding can actually differentiate between the two. And then we're going to um, click on may, uh, draw rim outline. 
Okay, and that gives us a yellow thing. And then we're going to, to just um, make a, this is exactly like making a, a byte block. So we want to set the foundation where we want this byte block to sort of finish. So let's just take this up like some somehow like that. And I'm going to extend it all the way to the back and fuse it there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy that connect line with the posing layer. And you see it like snaps to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exit there. I'm going to select this one, go control I, which is the inverse and H to hide. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place these points a little bit nicer where I think they should where, where I think they should be. So usually it, it is, you may need to do a little bit of adjusting here and there, depending on how far they're spaced apart. Usually the snapping is quite, quite good. In this case, it's not as nice as what, what I want it to be. So I'm just, I'm just repositioning these points a little bit like something like that. Okay, so when I'm done with that tab to exit Alt H to unhide, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, to um, make a, a rim, make dual rim, and that's made a rim. Now we're going to move to the other side and do exactly the same thing. So make sure it's selected though. Shift right click to place a cursor and then draw the outline. And here we're going to do exactly the same thing. Something like that, <clears throat> come across over the top like that. And we're going to snap connect with the posing layer. So if your, <laughs> your layer is not called a posing layer, the code's not going to find where, where to put it. Yeah, so that's very important. So I've exited the edit mode. I've select this one, control I and hide so that I've only got those on the scene, select tab, use the G key or just move them by left click and moving your mouse. So here we're just going to create where this rim is going to sort of uh, finish up top, something like that. Tab to exit, Alt H, and then we're going to make sure we make a, um, a dual rim. So now we've got two rims and we're going to unify them to the layer. So that should then um, unify like this. Again, we're in voxel remesh. We're going to set to 0 0.3 and we're going to finish that. But yet I, this time around, I'm going to smooth it a little bit nicer. So we're just going to give this a good brushing. So as I said before, you could actually leave the smoothing right to the end if you want to. So just give it a good smooth like a mini flame. Okay, so we, we're always thinking of having nice, beautiful meshes, which is key to printing success as well. I think that looks good. Wolf, what do you think? Yeah, that's quite, that's very comfortable. Mm. We can make it fine as well if you want it, but this is going to remesh when I click on exit, it's going to remesh anyway. So I'll leave it say at 0 0.3, I think, and finish that. that. That's good. And you can see how smooth it is, beautiful. So there's two things left, and one of them is to separate these. Okay, now how do we do that? We're going to select the lower model, and we're going to go to splint occlusal cutter. Now, this has had changes in the past and whatever, but I think <clears throat> it's sort of stabilized now. We haven't changed it for a while. So I'm going to select model for the plane. It'll hide the upper, shift right click to place my cursor and draw the line on the occlusal. So I'm going to go E left click and I'm going to select the highest cusp tips, something like this. And we're going to move through this to get the highest tip tips. So it's only the, only like the buckle tips that you're choosing. Yes. So here, something like this. Okay, when I'm done with that, we're going to then, um, if you don't know and you lost, sometimes I'm lost, like now I'm lost, what do I do? 
just read the bottom instructions. It says E to extrude verts and then blah, blah, blah. Then click make occlusal plane. So everything in quotation marks is the button name. So it says make occlusal plane. So I'm going to click on make occlusal plane. Okay, so now what now? It will say place verts on the highest lingual cusps. So all of everything is there on the tooltips and they stay there for 100 seconds. So it's enough time for you to read the message and do what you think you need to do. So here I'm just rearranging things. It doesn't have to be 100% exact. And we're going to make this occlusal plane cutter. Now this cutter can also be used for implant um, to, to cut the, the bone, to make it level for implant guides. Yeah, so we would then place this on the ridge of the bone and then we can use this one as well to, to do that. So here we're gonna make cut, cut make cutting um, tool. Now this cutting tool, if I look at it, it is sort of on the occlusal plane where, where we've actually drawn our, our things. Um, so here, what we can do is we can move it up halfway. So I can go say, Alt B, Alt yeah, make B a cr cross section. Yeah. Cross section. And you can see that this occlusal plane is like that. Now, you don't have to have it contoured like this. Okay, let me just save this. File, save as, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, if you want to straight, now we don't have this in our tutorial. If you want this to be straight and not contoured, simply go into edit mode, tab, A to select all, okay. Then you go S to scale, Z in the Z direction, and you click on the zero on your keyboard, you see? So now we've got a straight cutting tool, okay? So this is quite important, but if you've got a straight cutting tool, you have to manipulate it a little bit. So it is locked. If, if ever you see, try and use R to rotate and it doesn't work, it just means that it's locked. So then you would just man maneuver this so that you can get a straight line. Now this is quite tricky because you may have an over erupted tooth, which will make life difficult. This is why we have it contoured with our tooth surfaces, but it's just, I'm just taking the time <coughs> to explain how this works. Now in the back, we've got it more or less halfway all over the place. So here, if I go Alt B and I cross section it, you can see we've, we've got it quite close to halfway. This is why the bite could have been opened a little bit more. But in the front section, you can see it's actually biting, it's actually taking my tooth off. <laughs> so we have to be aware of all of these scenarios because now if I see this, okay, so th there's no splint in front. So they, that is okay. But if you've got it covered, then it'll take it off. And then if that's the case, go into edit mode, make sure the magnet tool is off and the proportional editing tool is on. Select your vertices. Okay, now we've got both of them selected. I only want to select the cutter. So then what you do is just go G, Z, and you're just going to manipulate this cutter where you want it to cut. And that's as easy as it gets. Yeah. So you can change it. Like here, for example, I can go G, Z, and I can, I can move this down a little bit if I want to. Okay. Just by using the Z or the G key, we can, we can manipulate this a little bit if you want to be really um, precise about, about where you're going to place these things. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click cut layer. Now that will make it split it into half. Okay, so we've got an upper and we've got a lower one. So this is our dual splint. Now there's one last step and that is to put the attachments on. Would you smooth that okay. first, Michael? <clears throat> well, I think, yeah, so control I and hide. We don't want to smooth it with the attachments on because then we may hurt the attachments. So we don't want to do that. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to go a smooth layer. And remember, I said to you, this is quite rough. Okay, we 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 don't want to destroy, we don't want to destroy our our thing. So I'm going to go a smooth layer, Dynatopa. I'm going to set that to around about six, and then I'm going to right click and set the auto smooth to around about zero point one. Okay, and then when I smooth, you can see how fine it is. So we don't destroy everything that we've created. Okay, so let's just, especially the clues will cut. You don't want to make a hole through it at this stage. So say something like that, okay? And I can smooth here as well a little bit. If you find it's, it's too slow, set this to 0 0.2 maybe, or 0 0.3, that speeds, it makes it more coarse as well. It's a bit like pumicing, pumicing something away like that. So here, like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm quite happy about wh what I have at the moment. Just smooth it like that. That looks absolutely awesome. What do you think, Wolf? Yeah, looking good. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna exit here and I'm going to just um, see my other one. I'm gonna put that to 0 0.3 again and apply. And then Alt H. Um, okay, where's my other splint now? Where's it going to? What have I done to it, Wolfgang? Not sure. <clears throat> it's disappeared. I don't know where my splint is going to. Did I did I delete it by mistake? There's, there's nothing here. Maybe I've deleted it by mistake. We'll just go back a step, unfortunately. So okay, we'll just we'll just we'll just cut this again. Sorry about that. I must have just pressed the wrong key. So, so this is important then to save your work as you go. So very important, okay? So just cut layer. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll just leave the smoothing. I think you guys know exactly what we're talking about, but we've got the upper and the lower splint, and we, we then, this is one, and then maybe, maybe we should just smooth it. Wolf, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, just smooth it. Just to, just to be more precise in everything. <clears throat> okay, smooth layer. But I'll just do it a little bit more coarse just to make it a bit faster. So you guys know exactly what to do when when this comes up. Like, okay, so we're gonna just like that, exit, that's good. And we're gonna have a look at the other one. This, this one, control I and hide. Smooth layer. Okay, like that. Yeah, we're gonna bring this back a little bit like that. Like this, okay. That's looking awesome. Exit, 0 0.3 and we're gonna finish. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna put our attachments in file import STL and we're going to just look for Wolf's attachments. Um, I think, no, it's D drive, sorry. Um, splint attachments here. Okay, now we've designed these ourselves to go with elastic. Um, you can use your own attachments or wherever you, you get them. Uh, Wolfgang thought it would be a good idea to put this little extrusion. Wolf, can you explain why you did this? Yeah, so I, the way I print it is with um, the rim down. The supports are on the actual um, periphery of the, the guide. Uh, so this is where your supports are. Yeah, supports which means that the attachments needed a little ledge because I don't want to put supports onto the, the attachments. I, I want to avoid that. 
So in order to do that, I needed to. We so needed so to well, put if you want to avoid, you want to avoid putting an attachment over here, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Because if we don't have this here, then you have to put an attachment, a, a sprue, uh, one yes. of those supports, support, isn't it? Support. So by putting that little ledge there, and we've got enough um, um, of the 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 actual um, attachment that the, the elastic squeezes over there and it doesn't come off. So it's quite all right like that. All right. So in order to maneuver these things, okay, I'll put, I'll just put this distal of the canine. I think we had a distal of the canine, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Canine. yes. Yeah. I mean, we can put this now you guys have to learn how to maneuver these in edit mode okay now normally we we move things in object mode now edit mode movement is really important to understand how this works because we're working with vertices now we don't ever want to have the magnet tool on and even the proportional editing tool need to be off now in order to do that we select them because you can see it's one uh, one STL file. Okay, so this works with your attachments, whatever you're using. It may be those those big um, I call them dog teeth because you're putting these big canine things, and you've got this attachment like a box on the top there. I've seen that a lot as well. So the principle is exactly the same. So we're going to go into <coughs> edit mode tab. Okay, now you can see they're all highlighted. Alt A deselects all, A selects all, all, all of them. Now we are in vertex select mode. You can be in, in, in the other mode, face select mode. I work in vertex select mode and that makes it quite easy. So what we need to do is we need to select them. So I'm gonna work first on one side. So I'm going to select one vertice and shift left click, select one vertice on the other side. Then what we use is control L. Okay, so make note of that. It's control L on the keyboard, control L. And that selects all these vertices. Now on the other side, none of them are selected. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate the scene say on top and we're gonna use R. Notice where the point of turning is I don't like it okay makes it difficult so what we're going to do is we're going to go up top here there's a little thing here and we're going to set this to the median point at the moment it's set to um, active element which takes the origin of the active element we're going to go to median point now watch what happens you see it rotates from the center of those two. It makes it way easier to manipulate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sync those in there, okay? So using the G key, we're gonna sync them in. Now this model is in my way, so I'm going to just hide this, okay? So hide, select tab, and we're going to just manipulate them. So using the R key and the G key, I'm, I'm using both of those where I think they should go using the G key and the R key. And then what I want to do is I'm going to individually take them. So I'm going to, so the distance is the same. So I'm going to select control L. I'm going to move the scene. So, okay, maybe, maybe this will hurt the lip. Okay, so if we can get it more flush with the splint, we can maybe get it a little bit more cozy for the patient. Okay, so I've, I've just, manipulated it. But now we still want to put another um, indicator on this attachment, how deep we can sink this in. So let's go for the other one. At the moment, it's just guesswork. Okay, so here I'm looking at, okay, it's it's touching almost there. I don't, maybe the elastic's not going to go in there nicely. So we're just going to manipulate it like a mushroom like that, something like that. And I can turn it as well like that. So we do this in edit mode. So now I'm happy with that. I'm going to go and select these. Tab, Alt A to deselect and Control L on the keyboard. Then look at it from the top, R on the keyboard, G on the keyboard, and we're going to sync those in there 
nicely, something like that. And then control L and edit. Everything is done in edit mode. R, G, like that. Take this one, control L on the keyboard. Take this one. Notice I'm always looking at it, I'm manipulating it with my scene to get the best outcome. So this this works with my scene. All right. So I think I'm I'm sort of happy with that. This one we can okay. Now note guys, these things extrude inwards. Now please do not cut your fitting surface at any time. You have to cut it right at the end. Okay. Always, 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 always. Okay. Now we need to we need to unify these to the upper splint now how do we do that this is one object we need to separate these so find yourself a separate key where it says separate so um, i'm looking here it says separate okay so separate them now they're all individual you can see i can click on them all individually so i'm going to select this one shift left click shift left click your splint last so it's orange other two are red and I'm going to go into edit it says edit here the edit I'm going to go to the bull tool okay bull tool so again here in I'm going to go select edit bull tool and we're going to click on union okay union like this and that will unify these meshes into one object again take this one shift left click shift left click this one last click on union okay now do it please inspect the union to make sure that it has unified if it hasn't unified you'll see this actually going through there and it hasn't unified and then you're going to have hassles in the end okay so from there there's one step left and that is cut the fitting surface so we're going to go back to the splint at the bottom it says splint cutting tools now we need to think object A minus object B. So this needs to be called layer. So have a look, this at the moment it's called layer zero one. It's not going to work, guys. It's going to then cut the, the other one. So this one must be called layer, and this one must be called target model, which it is, target model. And so I'll just click on target model again, which actually cleans up the model. This is why it's taking a bit long because it's getting rid of all of the, um, you know, pro problems in the, in the mesh structure. Okay, so just be patient with that one. And then we're going to cut fitting surface. So that should cut the fitting surface. So we'll just wait for it to cut. Okay, now we're going to inspect it. And this is beautiful. Uh, Wolfgang, we've got a hole in that. Can you yeah. see? It's Can because see? they cut, so, yeah. Because, you know, I called up the file again and I didn't check it properly and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this, this is something that you need to be aware of, but it can be fixed. Okay. So if I go back, okay. So um, it's not all in vain. So I'll just make sure it is um, the cut, the cut is not cut. Okay. So if I hide this one and hide this one, I can always bring out this a little bit. I mean, of course, now it won't be 100% because, but I don't want to redo the splint, okay? We can, if we want to, we can lift this. And you guys already know, the magnet tool off, proportional editing on, and we can use the G, Z, and we can we can move this up a little bit. Now, of course, the, the lower splint would have to be adjusted accordingly, yeah? So, okay. It's just to demonstrate. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the fitting surface. Okay, I think that's cut, hide. Okay, so here we can see it is it is done. So can, can, be, here's a question. Can you use the upper now to um, cut the lower, the lower occlusion where you've just... Yeah, so you, you, it can fail. It can, um, because 
if we've smoothed it, it probably will work because mm. if you've got one face on top of another face, you know, bullions don't like that. But, but you've smoothed it. it. Yeah. Let, let, let us try it. So I'm going to say this is the object. That's an object being cut. And we're going to take the dropper here and we're going to drop it on there. Okay. And then we're going to just have a quick look. Okay, it has cut it here perfectly. Yeah, yeah, Can you see? Yeah. So that's that's success. That's 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 really good. It's absolutely fantastic. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up. Just going to apply that cut. Okay. Perfect. And then the next step, the last step, is we're going to make sure this is called layer. This one has to be called target model. And then we're going to cut the fitting surface as well. Okay. So cut fitting surface. Okay, let's have a quick look and see if it's cut. Beautiful. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. Now you have to change okay. the color from green to something else. Why? <laughs> Why? Why, Wolf? <laughs> hey. Okay, so they, they're both doing the same thing. So you would then just delete one color, add another color and just change one color and then change the other color or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, so this is it. And then these models, we can we can actually hide and we can we can expose our other models, which is the original models. They should be in the original models here. They've been hidden away. So there's the original models and we've got our double night thing. Perfect. <clears throat> well then. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Great. Well done. Are there any questions on this? Um, making a dual sprint and snore guard. No questions. Oh, we see Dejan is here. We are alone in the universe today, Wolf. <laughs> Freddie, no, no. Freddie's there. Oh, there's a voice. Yeah. You just have 